Hello. I'm Gordon Brown, and this is GreenEconomy.tv. Welcome to the show today, where we're going to be speaking about this critically important topic of risk, business risk, that is, and, the, and climate change and the environment, and how do these things fit together. And most importantly, um, understanding this notion of building resilience as a key to managing climate risk for companies, helping us to understand this topic. Uh, we have uh, guests today from SRK Consulting, uh, Ashley Maritz and uh, Philippa Burmester. Uh, welcome, ladies, to the show. Uh, I'd like to get started by, by immediately introducing Ashley Maritz uh, to give us some, some introduction to SRK uh, under the heading of this topic, and also just to say a few words about yourself and your role at, at SRK. And then we're going to hand over to Philippa to ask her just to give us some sense of what she's busy with at SRK as well. So over to you, Ashley. Welcome to the show. Please continue. Thank you very much, Gordon. Um, so by way of introduction, SRK are an independent international consultancy where um, we provide focused advice and solutions to clients, mainly in the, the earth and water resources industries. We have extensive experience and are leaders in the in fields such as due diligence, technical studies, mine waste and water management, and then with specific um, relevance to today's discussions, climate change, as well as decarbonization advisory. Um, so with relevance to what we will discuss as we go through um, our interactions today, um, we have been involved quite extensively um, over the past two to three years in providing advice on climate change and how this impacts or may impact on our clients' projects and operations. So I'm Ashley Moritz, a Principal Environmental Scientist at SLK Consulting, where I play a very um, more of a, an advisory role pertaining to environmental management within the mining, energy and infrastructure sectors. And then together with my colleague, uh, Philippa Burmeister, we coordinate the Climate Change Advisory Group at SRK. Thank you. Over to you, Philippa. Go ahead, Philippa. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Um, as Ashley said, I'm Philippa Burmeister. I'm a principal scientist with SRK Consulting. Uh, my specialization is in air quality and climate change, where I focus on climate change risk identification and mitigation, greenhouse gas quantification and management, and then recently we've started looking at emissions monitoring using hyperspectral satellite imagery. Um, I've done that for a broad range of clients, including mining and industries, um, although none of these are particularly specific to any sector. Absolutely, Gordon. So we started to see environmental awareness through the King reports, but nothing of the magnitude where, where environmental and social governance today is seen as, as a core risk to businesses. So we are seeing a, a big increase in awareness by companies. Also, regulation or policy has always driven environmental compliance previously, but climate change changes that. Climate change is a real risk to the sustainability of businesses and businesses are realizing this and needing to uh, address that risk at a core level. Right. So, I mean, uh, uh, given this sort of red alert status that's now being recognized, uh, we might say finally by companies, especially in terms of, uh, 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 you know, their businesses and the opportunity of their businesses to, to sustain their, their uh, into the future. What sort of actions are you seeing companies taking? So one does need to be quite constructive in this. Um, climate change is obviously a continually moving target. Um, where, so solutions need to be adaptive, um, proactive, and um, they need to follow climate-related trends to identify what the risks are and then uh, work to managing those risks. Right, right. So, so thank you. I'd like to bring Ashley back into the conversation at this point. I mean, Ashley, 
help me help us understand exactly what types of challenges uh, uh, companies are facing uh, in this regard. Uh, you know, in their move to try to manage these risks. I mean, what are what are the barriers to them trying to manage these risks? So, Gordon, one of the one of the key challenges is that businesses are still very much unsure and still discovering the sheer breadth and understanding of what these impacts are and the way in which they um, affect their operations. So this process um, of identifying risks is very much still developing. Um, and that's where we come in and we assist with, with our clients with identifying those risks, as well as whether um, they relate to the client's business itself or if it, it impacts on, say, their upstream or their downstream stakeholders. Mm, right. So, yeah, so, I mean, what, what, what can companies do? Uh, well, let me put it this way. What, what help do companies need uh, to identify uh, the risks that they need to prioritize and what these risk areas are? And, and, and also, of course, what help do they need to, to really try to navigate a course of action um, through what is, what is actually quite a complex matrix uh, uh, of risks and counter risks? Yes, so um, an emerging approach that we are adopting is, um, is to commission a climate, what we term a climate change impact assessment or a CCIA where one would then look at together with um, other specialists, you would look at the impacts of the projects on, on climate change, as well as the impact of climate change on the project. And what we do to assist us with this is we make use, uh, specifically where it comes to the impact of, of climate change on the project is predictive modeling, because the client also wants to know um, potentially in the future, as they're going through their design phases, for example, what could climate change potentially do to their operations? So we are seeing by the use of predictive modeling that we are able to advise our clients on how to, for example, design stormwater infrastructure for more frequent and more intense flooding, uh, for example. So that is just one of the ways in which we, we, um, approach, we approach this. Right, so, so climate change risk assessment and uh, and, and how does that differ from an environmental assessment, which uh, which is one of the key uh, uh, reports that you assist companies with at the moment? So, God, Gordon, um, a climate change impact uh, assessment is, is quite different from a traditional environmental and social impact assessment or an ESIA. So the ESIA considers mainly um, the effect of a project on its immediate broader environment. Whereas conversely, your climate change impact assessment is more about understanding the environment's current and forecasted effects on the business and its stakeholders. And then formulating practical responses that will build resilience to those risks identified. No, absolutely. So, Philippa, bringing you back in to talk about the practical process here. So, ostensibly, the first step is to identify the vulnerabilities, if you like, the, the risks. And step two, then, is to begin to build that resilience against those areas of vul vulnerability, I guess, close those gaps. Um, where, where, where does a company begin or how does a company even begin to do this? Thanks, Gordon. So, yeah, as, as she said, um, modeling is very important so that we can start to look to the future. But um, given the limitations in modeling, one needs to fill those gaps, as you say, with monitoring. And it's not enough just to monitor. It's really important that that monitoring data be analyzed constantly for trends and hints as to how conditions are changing and that those trends and changes then start to inform critical decision making. Right. So it, it really needs to become part of the strategy. And so, and, and I guess that's really the next question. So, you know, traditionally and typically and uh, companies would develop their strategies and their very uh, 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 effective and long-standing principles around how companies 
develop their strategies and implement and roll out their strategies. Uh, you know, how has this changed? I mean, what do companies, how do companies now need to adapt to this new reality from a strategy development point of view? That's absolutely right. So previously, companies would have 100 years worth of data on which to base decisions and they could watch trends and anticipate impacts using hundreds of years of, of climate data, for instance. Now we can't rely on that data or guarantee that conditions won't change substantially. So um, again, so important to keep monitoring, analyzing, and as you say, adapting as, as we go forward. Yes. And so, um, I mean, I guess it's, it, it's, it's, it's not as simple, really. It's not as simple as a, as a company then going through this process, getting the climate risk assessment done, uh, you know, having a strategy session, bringing that in and then tying a ribbon around it. I mean, is it that simple? Can you just wrap it up in that way? Uh, and uh, sorry, Ashley, I, I wanted this question uh, for you. So if you could possibly come in and answer that, uh, just to rephrase the question, you know, so we, we've got this sort of approach that companies can take you know, once they've done that, once they've done the assessment um, and they've brought it into the strategy, is that it? Is that sort of job done for them? Um, so, no. So, Gordon, um, obviously, in order to ensure that this is an ongoing and effective process, we find that the company needs to embrace this as part of their, their company DNA, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be an ongoing process that's continuously um, updated as you get new monitoring results in year by year or month by month, or however, however long your monitoring protocol is, you would update that with, with those results. You would continue with your predictive modeling. Um, and in that way, you assist your company in, in building its um, resilience in key areas. So it's definitely not a, a one-stop package that you can just wrap up and then say, thanks very much, we've done that tick. Um, it's definitely something that is an ongoing uh, process and something that needs to be ingrained within the, D within the DNA or the, the company um, core values and, and structure. Yeah, I know. Great. And so, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's really quite an interesting thought if you, can, if you walk down into the future and imagine, imagine all leading companies and, and, and sort of medium to large companies around the world adopting this approach uh, and bringing, uh, bringing this, uh, this, this adaptation, this resilience building into their strategies, um, I mean, that, that has the potential to really change the business landscape completely. Pe perhaps uh, comment on that idea. So no, definitely, without a doubt. And it's, it's fundamental that companies, and we have seen it, um, companies are realizing the, well, have realized the impact of climate change. I think we're seeing it more and more every day um, and are automatically building, building various um, areas of resilience into uh, their company strategies and policies so that that translates then into the projects that they, their greenfields projects, as well as their current projects that they have, their brownfields projects, so that they can be prepared for, for the risks associated um, with climate change, both the known and, and the unknown. Yes, indeed. And so thank you very much indeed uh, uh, to, to Ashley and to Philippa for joining us today and chatting about the super important topic and the role that SRK is playing in, in being able to guide companies in, in achieving this objective of building resilience as a key to managing climate risk. Just it, as, a, as a final note, and we're going uh, to ask Philippa to, to have the last word. Uh, perhaps you can have a go at that last question. Just give us a sense of how you see things unfolding as companies start to adopt these approaches. Um, yeah, do, do you see this having perhaps a, a potential to really change how business is done? Thanks, Gordon. Absolutely. Um, I think previously we had, to a large extent, silo thinking with different departments being responsible for different aspects. Climate change is a leveler. 
and they talk about mainstreaming climate change, which basically means that it doesn't really matter what you do, you need to start considering how climate change will impact what you do. So climate change is not something that can be solved by one person or one project. It needs to become something that is considered in all aspects of the business. And I think that's going to be the fundamental change that decides whether a company becomes resilient or not. Uh, we're also starting to see some changes in uh, the financial institutions where financial where they've become very aware of the risks of climate change. And so finance is now coming with quite a few strings attached with regard to understanding and managing the risks to those potential projects. So um, I suppose in closing, um, this is very much a team effort uh, and how we've certainly managed the way we do projects is we draw very heavily um, not only on our own skills from a climate change perspective, but those skills from various specialists in SRK who, who offer very specialized skills to the mining industry and to, to um, chemical and petrochemical industries also. No, what a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all uh, the time we have today. Um, and and you, there you have it. You've heard it from... Uh, from the leaders, from the leading thinkers, uh, climate change posing an existential threat to businesses. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know more, reach out to SRK. Check out the greeneconomy.media website. Loads of stories, loads of content on this topic. Uh, that's all the time we have today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Goodbye and have a nice day. Bye-bye.